If you'd like to learn how to use Dynamics 365 Sales, you have come to the right place. This video is my complete tutorial for beginners. By the time you're finished here, you are going to be able to go away and use your CRM in Dynamics just like a total expert. So this is the CRM part of the Dynamics platform, primarily account and contact management, lead to opportunity and pipeline management, and all of the activities that are associated with those things. We're going to be having a look at how all that works with Outlook and Teams, as well as the AI features that are part of this platform now that means it's more than just an address book or more than just a way of tracking your pipeline, all of the tools in there that actually help you become smarter and more proactive at selling and give you insights into what's going on. Stick with me to the end. We're also going to have a look at how you can configure Dynamics 365 sales. If there are things on the screen that aren't quite the way that you would want them, no problem at all. You can sort that out. All right, there's a lot to cover here. Let's get into it. Here we are in Dynamics 365 Sales. We are working in the cloud here. So start with your preferred browser. You'll have a URL to navigate to and you will just sign in with your Microsoft account, the same one you use for the other services at work for Outlook Teams and so on. You don't need a separate login because it's all the same platform. Before we get started here, let's have a look up in the very top menu. We are in the Sales Hub which is the sales CRM application. And you'll see that all of these other friendly icons that hopefully you're working with every day are absolutely right there behind you. Just taking you through some of the navigation of what's on the screen here, because there is a lot to take in. We have got down the left hand side here, our main navigation menu. Home will take you back here. You have got a spot for recent records. So if we open this up, these are the ones that you've used recently. And when you're working with your CRM, you'll often go back to those same accounts or contacts or opportunities repeatedly over a short period of time. So that makes it easy. And a step further, if there's one there, let's say we're working a lot with Paul, I want to pin that record. I can go into the pinned items and see him there. Now, before we go any further, all of this data is fake. YouTube, hello. <laughs> All of this data is fake. My last tutorial on this subject got taken down because I made my demo data look a bit too real. So hopefully this is really obvious. I do apologize for having brackets sample left on everything, but I think that's a safer way to make sure that it's absolutely clear that no real people were harmed in any way or used in any way in the making of this tutorial. All right. Further down the side here, Sales Accelerator, that's the screen we've got in the middle. We're going to come back to that. And then the main pieces that we're going to be looking at here, Accounts and Contacts, each of these will allow you to navigate to a list of records in the system and leads and opportunities. Now, there are other things here as well, competitors, quotes, orders, invoices, products. I'm not going to focus on those here. These top sections are what like the vast majority of people use in the CRM the vast majority of the time. So we're going to really focus on those things, but there is more depth there if you do want to explore those things in particular with a search bar right at the top here. Let's have a look at this. So let's say I wanted to find Paul. You'll see straight away, even when I click on it, it's giving me the ones I've been to recently. So I don't even need to immediately start typing. But if I go in here and type in Paul, you'll see as I'm typing, it's finding everything with that word in there. Let's try spelling it incorrectly because we are, after all, only human quite often do that. Look at that fuzzy logic in the <laughs> search as well. It's out of the box searching on the main tables in the system. But if you've got some custom things going on or you wanted to search on other things, you can absolutely set it up to do that for you. Main part of the screen here now, we have a work list down the side. So I'm on here, the record for Paul Cannon. I've got all of that information here. If I click up to the one above, Patrick Sands, you'll see that changes and brings that one up in context. So this allows you to go through and click on those cards down the side and see those in the middle there. A couple of other things just to be aware of here. We always have a series of actions across the top. These will change in context depending on where we are. So for instance, when I'm on a person here, well, single click being able to add that person to a marketing list to receive communications is a really easy thing to do. We also have the notion of assigning. So everything in the system has an owner. In this case, I'm the owner. And for this tutorial, I'm the owner of everything. <laughs> but in a real world scenario, obviously you've got multiple people logging in and this drives the security of the whole system. So every contact, every account, opportunity, everything in the system is owned by a user or by a team. And that determines who can see it, who can edit, delete, 
share, connect it to other records and so on. That's a whole other video for another time. Uh, but just know that as we go through all of the things I'm showing you here, you have full control over who can see and do what with what through that security model there. A couple of icons up the top here that I'll point out. In particular, this one here for help. You can have custom help panes down the side. I've got a whole other video if you're interested in that. And Teams Chat here, which allows you to collaborate in Teams. We're going to be looking at that one as we go through. And the Settings icon, which will allow you to go into Settings to change your date and time format or your time zone, as well as System Admin Settings. And this one here is a quick place to go if you need to create a new record, you want to create a new account or contact or whatever in the system, you can jump straight through into there to do that. All right, let's now go in and have a look at account management. We are going to come back to this piece as we go through. But as I click on this one on the side here, this is going to bring up a list of all of the accounts that I've got in the system. And this is called a view. So this is a series of columns that have been set up. And you'll find that you've got choices here. So this is my active accounts. I'm the owner. These are all of mine. If I go into this switcher here, you'll see there are some other options. So we've got all accounts and we can switch across and that might have different columns on the screen, but that will give me access to the extent that I have permission to do it to all of the accounts in the system. Now, because of the way that I've set this up, I think I I own, I think I own all of the accounts, but that idea of being able to go in and view data differently and you can actually set up these views for yourself if you would like. So let's have a look at that. Let's say I'm in my list of accounts here and I really want to see the account number in this view as well. I can go over here into edit columns add a column. Now this is where there's a lot of columns going on, but I know I've got account number there. Close that apply. And now I have a view that has the account number in it. You can save that for your own personal use. So only people with the administrator privilege can save views for the whole organization. But as an individual user, you can go in here and say, save as a new view. I call this Lisa's account view, save that. And then if I want to keep this one as the view that I see all the time or any of the other system views that I want to see as my default, I can go in here and say set as default view. You also have the option in here to share views if you have permission to do that to create a view and share it with other users. Other things that are important about views, you can sort. So I've got my account name in alphabetical order from A to Z, which makes sense. You could sort it in reverse alphabetical order if you wanted to do that. You can also apply filters here. So let's say I wanted to only see customers who are in Redmond. So I can say equals Redmond, but you'll see we've got other options there to say begins with, ends with. If you're working with things here that are like dates or numbers, you'll get some other options in there as well to put in something that is before a certain date or after a certain date. There we go. So we've applied that filter. And if I don't want that anymore, I can clear that filter. One other thing to notice here is this little hierarchy tile on the side. This allows you to view an account hierarchy and actually tells you that that account has a hierarchy or is part of one. So you can actually set a parent account for any of the accounts in the system. You can have multiple levels of that. So you'll see here we've got a datum corporation at the top. It's showing us who the key contact is, who the owner is, and the revenue of what we've won with that account. These cards can be changed to show the key metrics and things that you want, but you'll see at a snapshot there that we've got all of that information and you can actually click on those to take you straight through to the details of that account. For now though, I'm going to navigate back to my main accounts menu and I'm going to go in and you'll see it's come back to Lisa's account view because I set that as the one that I wanted to work with. Let's go in and have a look at this one here, Alpine Ski House. This is where we're managing the relationship with that business or organization, as well as being able to get through to the people who work for that organization. So accounts and contacts in Dynamics exist in a hierarchical structure where one account can have many contacts linked back up to it. So this is working at the account level here. Now, the form we see on the screen here is exactly as it comes out of the box. But as I said, we're going to come back later and have a look at how you can change this up. If, for instance, like me, you really don't have much need for facts anymore or ticker symbol is something that's not relevant to you, you can remove those. Perhaps you want to have, you know, account ranking gold, silver, bronze and put that up in the top here. 
we're going to come back and show you how to do all that. So nothing on the screen here is set in stone. And depending on what you've been given for your organization, you may have a screen that has been configured a little bit differently, but the principles are exactly the same. So we have here a section at the top for the account information and the key things there. We have a fake, fake address <laughs> in there. And then we have in the middle here, all of the activity that's going on. So this up next panel, Remember that screen at the start that was giving us that intelligent work list that's related back to here. So the up next panel is giving you suggestions of what it has to happen, either set tasks that you've put in or going forward, AI based suggestions about next best actions will appear here. We've got a timeline here where we have got meetings, tasks, appointments, phone calls, emails, and so on. All of that is completely connected to Outlook. We'll have a look at that when we look at a person underneath. We've also got an assistant here that's giving us a reminder. So in this case, there's an opportunity that's closing soon. And these are cards that you can configure to show you prompts of things that you need to be reminded about. So there's a related opportunity here that's closing. You can also have cards here that say things like account has not been contacted for three months or whatever metric you want to set on that. So it's giving you that insight and prompting you to do something. We have got the related people here. So Paul is the primary contact, the main point of contact. And you'll see here we've got a little panel that's bringing through his fake email and phone number there. And we've got the other contacts that work at that organization so we can see details about who they are and recent opportunities. Now, anything else that's related to this account, if you were working with cases with the customer service side, you could see that here. If you have other specific things, say you're in a legal scenario and you're tracking matters, you would have those there or lines of services that you offer, you could configure that in there as well. So this idea of having an organization and then all of those related things underneath can be extended as far as you need it to be. At the top here, we have a header. If you want to edit anything in the header here, just there's, there's where you go. <laughs> so you're going to click on that little icon there. Let's say the number of employees is actually, you know, 5,000. Uh, then we can go in and change that. Along the top menu bar here, you can click save at any point. It does actually auto save for you. If you're navigating around and clicking through the system as you leave one record, it will save as you exit. So you generally don't have to do that unless you're creating a new one for the first time. Now I did promise you we we're going to have a look at some of the tools in here that help you with your sales. We have got a tab here called Relationship Analytics. I'm just going to switch across into a different trial system here to show you this because the data is much richer than what I've got in my demo system. So same concept here, we're in Relationship Analytics and look at what this is telling us. Some key metrics here. We have initiated three phone calls more compared to the customer. We've invested less time. We've taken longer to respond to emails and the rate of response of emails is higher. So a bit of a mixed bag there. Importantly, who is working with them? So here are the contacts from that organization who we're reaching out to. So we can see there's a couple of different people there, the number of emails, phone calls and appointments, as well as my colleagues in the organization here. I can see Jeremy is also working with this account. And we've got some lovely visuals here that are showing, you know, is the love going both ways or is one part of the, or, you know, we reaching out to them all the time and getting nothing back. That's really useful to know. So you can see here, we actually have a pretty evenly spread spread relationship. And then we've got our activities along the bottom here that's showing us the emails sent and received and meetings and phone calls and things, a bit of a lull there in January over the holiday break. And we've got that sense of the activity that's going on. So this relationship analytics piece exists at account level. You can also see it on opportunities, contacts, leads, and so on. So you can find this everywhere if you've got that enabled in your system to really get an idea of the health of how that relationship is going. From here, let's take a look at working with an individual person because a lot of that action when you're working even in a business to business scenario is with the person. Now, if you're purely B2C and you don't need that level of the hierarchy, then you don't need to use accounts. You can just work with contacts all the way. But if you are in that B2B scenario, then that hierarchical relationship and even the hierarchy of accounts and so on allows you to manage that very easily. So here's Paul's information on the screen and you'll see very much the same layout as what we had. So as we work through this, it's all very similar. We've got the key information down the side here, timeline, and we can come in here and create records. So you can do this anywhere in the system in the timeline, makes the most sense to show it to you as a contact. So what we can do is create appointments. They will be synced with Outlook and in fact with Teams if you want to set it up as a Teams call. 
So let's say we set this up as project summary. I'm setting it as a Teams meeting from inside here and we will we'll put this in for Tuesday, Valentine's Day at 3 p.m. till 3.30 p.m. and save and close. So that's created it in here, but it will also create it in Outlook. It will send it to that person as a Teams meeting with a Teams meeting link. So all in one there. And there we have it in the timeline and you can see that it's a Teams link. You can in fact even join the Teams meeting from Dynamics 365 if that's where you're working. You can also from here create tasks and track emails. If you create a task and you'll see I've got one there that it's reminding me is due today, that is the same task object between Dynamics, Outlook, Microsoft to do and Teams. So that task goes all the way through and emails can be tracked in here as well so that you've got that record of what's going on. Now remember security and permissions, you can only see emails from other people if the security allows you to do that. But sometimes in some organizations that's what they want. It's easy to see oh, other people in my organization have been interacting with Paul so I know what's going on. And in some scenarios it's highly confidential so security will control who can see what in the timeline. So let's have a look at the Outlook side of this experience. Switch across and before we look at this email from Paul, switch across into my calendar here first and we're going to go forward a week and there we go. There's the project summary meeting that you just saw me create. I'm the organizer and we can see that that meeting is tracked to Dynamics 365 and it has actually been set up as a Teams meeting. Now the other piece we've got in here and we'll look at this with the email as well is something called Viva Sales. This is allowing you to do CRM work from inside Outlook. So everything I've shown you so far we've been working in Dynamics but let's say you haven't started your day in Dynamics or frankly you actually do spend most of your day in Outlook then as you're coming through here you've created the appointment from within here you can see all of the details about that. We can see that Paul is the purchasing assistant there. I can go to Dynamics 365. We've got the meeting there. We've got contacts. We've got a related opportunity. We've got details about the account in there as well. So there's a lot of information that's coming through now that's giving you stuff in the context of that meeting. Let's close that and have a look at tasks. So tasks in Outlook use Microsoft to do that will launch in another window. Incidentally, Teams uses to do as the tasks as well. And if you use it on your mobile app, same experience. So here's my list of tasks. Book a meeting for today, track to dynamics. That's the same one that we saw right there. Let's have a look at what happens in the email experience. We'll navigate back into that. Now I'm using for this demo Outlook Online uh, just because it's easier for demo purposes. But if you're using Outlook, uh, the desktop application, all of this is the same functionality in there. You can see here that I've got an email from Paul Cannon and a little icon here for Viva Sales. So the same experience. So this allows me again in the context of email, let's say that one came in, I've got all of this information here. So yes, there he is as a Dynamics 365 contact. I can click here and I can see recent activity that's gone on. So there's the email, there's the proposal meeting, there's the project summary meeting that we just set up. I can click through to Dynamics 365 here and I've got more information. I can actually edit this directly from here. So let's say I go in here and I find out he's actually been promoted to be the purchasing manager now. Congratulations, fake Paul. And we can update Dynamics 365 and that will actually go straight in there. So you've got visibility here of what's going on and direct connection to updating that data in there. Let's just prove that. So we'll go back to Paul's record here. I will refresh the screen and there we go, purchasing manager. So that ability to keep your data up to date from Outlook, quite often if someone's got some change in their signature, you can just update it exactly in Outlook there as you go. You'll see if you scroll down, we've also got more detailed information. So the opportunity, revenue, close date, and that was the one that was coming up soon, details about the account. So there's a lot of things going on now in the context of this email in Outlook. Let's just go back up a level here because we're looking at the person and have a look at the broader picture of what we're doing in Dynamics 365 and we can choose to save this email. So this is about tracking that email to that record. So I can click here to say yes, I want to save that to Dynamics 365 and it's giving me some choices here about where I want to link it up in the system. So this one is clearly about an opportunity to do with this SKU here. I've got an opportunity in there already and it knows that that person is the decision maker for that opportunity 
opportunity. So I'm going to say, yes, thanks very much. I would like to save that email in relation to that opportunity. So the email tracking doesn't have to be just at the level of that individual person. It's actually really useful, that timeline concept, and we'll see it when we come back to opportunities, that that's actually in there against the opportunity at that level where it's most relevant. Viva Sales can also help us with doing the data entry for us for a brand new contact. So I've got this email here from Sandra Kellett. She's not in Dynamics and watch this single click. <gasps> How good is this? Look at this. First name, last name, job title, obviously her email address, phone number. If there was a mobile phone in there, it would pick that up too. Save. And that contact is created in Dynamics. Didn't even have to go there. Didn't even have to type anything at all. Go back up a level in Viva Sales here and I can go in and also make sure that that email is tracked. Save the email to Dynamics as well. And then I can add it against a connected record in the system or by default, it's just gonna go against Sandra and click save and it's all done and there it is. Let's take a look at that in Dynamics. Here we go, Sandra Kellett, there's the email that I received, all of the contact details there that were automatically entered in Viva Sales. Before we switch gears into having a look at that lead to opportunity pipeline, which is the next and very exciting part and kind of the core thing that we wanna do here, let's have a look at the experience of creating records in the system because if you're using this, chances are that's something you're gonna to wanna to do. We saw earlier that you can come up here and click on the plus button to create things here, but I tend to find that I'll navigate to the type of record that I want to be working with here. So we've got my accounts and I can click on plus new from here and that will allow me to create an account. Now this is the main creation experience is giving me exactly that same format on the screen of all of the pieces that are in here. So let's say that we're going to create an account here called Acme Inc. You'll see there's data validation here. So if I tried to navigate away or click somewhere there without putting in the account name, it won't let me do that. So you can have rules in there about the things that have to be in there. Uh, we'll just make up a, a random phone number, you'd fill in the address detail and so on in there. Once you click save, that will create the record. So the first time you create a new record, you'll see it isn't saved. And as soon as I've actually saved it, now I've got the name at the top there and all the details. And now all of these other things open up, all of the pieces where I can put in the related records are available to me to work with as well. Now, if I wanna create a contact associated with this account, I could navigate to contacts and create a new one. But if you're creating a related record in that hierarchy, you can do it from within here. So I can go into here and say contact, new contact. And what pops up on the side here is called a quick create. So this allows you to sort of have that much shorter data entry experience. And because I've initiated that from the account, it's already brought in the account. It's already brought in the address and the phone number and things in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my contact person. So Betty Manager here is the um, head of sales for that organization. I could fill in her email here, betty at demo.com and her mobile phone number. And again, any of those things. If she was in a different address or had a different phone than the main phone number, let's say she's on a different extension there, I can update those things as well and save and close. And there she is linked to that account. Let's take a look now at the experience of going through leads to opportunities and managing a pipeline, because in the end, we're using the system to sell things to all of these people, as well as managing that relationship. So I'll come across here to leads, and I've got a bunch of leads that are in the system already. So you can just come up here in the same way we just saw and click plus new. Leads can come into the system all sorts of different ways. You might have an email inbox rule that's automatically creating them. You might have a web form that's receiving them and putting them in here, or someone taking a phone call and entering them. However they get into the system, you'll end up with something like this. Now the concept of a lead is that it's not a person or an account, it's like a baby opportunity. So a, an individual person or an organization could have multiple leads. Let's say for instance that Anna here is interested in some products and she is also interested in some other products and some other services. You might have three or four leads for Anna. She works for Woodgrove Bank and you might have a lot of details there as well. So at the moment, this one gotta say is pretty well populated. <laughs> Often with a lead, you might just have the, the sort of the first name, maybe a company name, maybe a phone number or email if you're lucky. 
tricky. So you can put in as little as your organization requires you to put in. And the idea here is that we're going through this qualification process. So have a look at this across the top here. This is called a business process flow. This is designed to guide us through the steps and stages. And in this case, this is a lead to opportunity sales process. So we are in the qualify process because this is a lead. This has not been qualified. We do not know if it's junk or if it might turn into something. So once we've been through that qualification process, we unlock, see how they're locked, the next steps that come along in turning it into a fully fledged opportunity. But before we do that, let's take a look around. You'll see some things that are similar to what we looked at with accounts and contacts, but this goes up a level here because this is where the AI in the system and those next best actions and things really start to come in. This piece here from the sequence is actually what we saw at the start. We will come back to that. But this is actually saying that this is an automated introductory email. So what we're doing here is saying as the leads come into the system, we are applying a series of steps that you want to take and you can set these up for yourself. First thing that should happen is send a welcome email. Second thing that should happen is make a phone call, all of those kinds of things. And as they are marked complete, we can tick that off, make a note for it, mark it as complete, and it will actually put it into the timeline and then give us the next steps along the way. So in this qualification process, it's giving us all of that guidance that we need. I'm going to show you another AI feature that's easier to have a look at in my demo system here as well, where there's a little bit more going on. Leads can be scored so that we can focus on the ones that are most likely to close. And this takes, you have to have at least 40 qualified and 40 disqualified leads in your system before this kicks in. Obviously, the more data you've got in the system, the better this is going to be. But this is giving you a bit of a traffic light signal system on how things are going. So if we come across and have a look at leads over here, we have got this view here where we are bringing in, remember the relationship health score before? So if this is an organization or a person you've worked with already, you can have a look at the status of that relationship and that will bring that in. If we go into the lead here, you'll see that we've got this lead score that's telling us what's going on. So we're saying this is a grade B and improving. The decision maker is identified, that's giving us a positive score. The country or region is in the United States, so that's telling us that we are qualifying more leads from the United States than we are from other countries. The purchase time frame of next quarter and the estimated budget is blank are things that are dragging that score down. And we can go in and have a look at more details here about how that's changed over time. Now I've just spun this up so it hasn't changed over time, but again, in your real world scenario, you could see, gee, we started off really hot on this one and it's, it's dropped down. So it's giving you all of that information about what's going on and that can help you with prioritizing where you're putting your efforts. This one's looking good. Incidentally, you'll see you've got a blue process flow here. It is possible to change the color of that if the red isn't doing it for you. So let's say that we've done all the work and I'm going to skip ahead here and fake Anna here is a really, really good prospect. We are going to move to the opportunity stage. What we've got here is a single button that's called qualify. Now, if this one was not going to be qualified, if it turned out to be complete junk, then we have got a disqualify button here. Incidentally, this is a fully responsive screen. I've got it enlarged a little bit just so it's a bit easier to see for the video. But if I scroll it down, then you'll see what happens is the top toolbar here will change in response to that. So different things will appear. So that disqualify button will appear on the toolbar at a certain zoom level. Whereas if I zoom up, then it will disappear off the top just because I've got it. So however you like to work with the size of your screen, you can manage that. So I'm not going to disqualify. This one is a, this is a hot lead. <laughs> it's all good. So I'm going to go through here and click qualify. And let's see if I can explain it faster than it can do it. This is going to do three things. The first thing it will do is create Anna as a contact if she doesn't already exist. It will also create Woodgrove Bank as an account if it doesn't already exist and link those two together in the hierarchy. Actually, it's doing more than three things. It's also going to create an opportunity which is connected back to that lead and connected to the newly created Anna and the newly created Woodgrove Bank and have all of that sorted out. And there you go in real time. It takes about as long to explain it as it does to do it. So now we have our opportunity level unlocked, right? We've gone from qualify into develop. So we're moving forward in the sales process, but we are now in an opportunity. There's my opportunities down the side and the contact there is Anna. 
The account is Woodgrove Bank. Those are both hyperlinks. It's actually created those things and put them all together and all of the timeline activities. So there's actually like five things going on. All of the timeline activities of what happened during that lead process have been brought across here as well into this single screen. And now I'm working through my opportunity process. Let's take a look at this business process flow because we didn't look at that much before beyond the top level. This is a series of stages. So we're in the develop stage. And if I click on that, it will give me the steps that I need to take in order to move forward. So this is saying that I need to identify the stakeholders, identify the competitors, the customer need and the proposed solution at this develop stage. Pretty good stuff, right? And as I check those things off, it will mark them as complete. Now this one doesn't have them marked as mandatory, but you can actually do that to enforce that process going forward. As it stands, it's more of a guideline of what needs to be done. And when I get through that develop stage, I can move it along to the proposed stage. Now this feeds all of your pipeline reporting. So if you're working on a sales pipeline, there are forecasting tools in Dynamics as well that you can use. This is all starting to feed that reporting of where things are up to in the pipeline and and some of the intelligence here about how likely this is to close. So again, let's take a look at this with some of the AI tools added. Click across into my other trial system here and we have got an opportunity score of 75, grade B and steady, similar to what we saw, in fact, the same concept as what we saw with the lead scoring, but also now relationship health. Remember, we looked at that earlier. It's a fair relationship and steady. There are no upcoming activities scheduled and the last interaction was on the 1st of February. So this isn't great, right? Like you've got, you're at a qualify stage, you haven't really done much. It's looking good, like it's a B grade opportunity, 75% likelihood to close, but you're sort of not managing that relationship well. We can go in and have a look at the relationship analytics here and see what's going on. Next interaction not scheduled, there's your last interaction, who the contacts are, what's going on with all of those things and start to take a look at it and perhaps make sure that you're reaching out to get the right coverage on that opportunity. Back to my slightly simpler system here, we've also got other pieces of information that are connected. So in addition to saying this opportunity is with this contact at this account, and again, if you're only working B2C, you don't need to use the account part. We've got other people involved here. So we've got stakeholders who are our external stakeholders. So let's say I can come in here and we have got a connection. So this allows you to connect other records in the system. And this can be other people or anything else, really other sort of projects or other things you've got in the system. Let's say that Betty Manager, who we uh, created before, who works for a partner organization, is actually going to be a key influencer in this decision. And we can bring that in and we can set up different roles here to determine what that level of stakeholder is. I can also add other people in here. So I can scroll down for my sales team and bring in people who are internal to the organization. So I'm going to make a connection here with my colleague, Alex, who is helping me out in some way. We're collaborating together on this. So we will add Alex as a sales team member. And there's also a spot at the bottom here where you can add competitors as well, so that if you win or lose an opportunity, you've got the track of who you're winning or losing to. Now, let's say I need to have a chat to Alex about what's going on with this opportunity because I need their help. I can come across here and click on Teams Chats. And this brings up some of my actual Teams Chats. So this is not a separate chat thing. This is actually Teams Chat, as you'll see, but I want to create a new connected chat related to this opportunity. Now it's suggesting quite rightfully that Alex is the person that I might want to chat with here. So it's using that intelligence of the connected records there to make those suggestions. Of course, you can reach out to anybody else in your organization or external to your organization as well to have a chat about this. So let's close this down. We have got this information coming through here. So we've got the name of the opportunity and the potential customer. Uh, I'm gonna say, could you help me with, could you help me with the proposal and initiate that chat? Here is my experience now. I'm working in Dynamics. I'm doing all of my sales stuff, but Alex is perhaps working on something else and not in Dynamics. Let's go and have a look at the view from the other side here. So this is Alex's view and Alex has got a chat from me saying, could I help with this proposal? You can click through there and open that record and view it in Dynamics 365 and say, sure, I've got time tomorrow. Discuss. 
And then I'm going to flip back to me in Dynamics here. And there is Alex's response on that. I can use all of the same things that I can use in Teams chat there with those reactions. I can attach files. I can use GIFs and so on if I want as well. So this is allowing us to use that Teams chat capability for collaboration. It doesn't even have to be another Dynamics user. You can be collaborating with anybody else about that and you can have multiple connected threads and multiple connected chats that are going on in there. Let's take a look at a couple of other things with opportunities here. I'm going to go back to my main view of opportunities. We will close down that Teams chat experience. And remember when we were having a look in Outlook earlier, we had Paul Cannon here and we tracked this one related to this SKU JJ202 opportunity. So let's go in and have a look at that one, which is sitting in the list here. And there's my email tracked in the timeline. Now you'll see I've got this reminder. It's prompting me saying this is closing very soon. Realistically, I'm still at qualify stage here. This isn't going to happen. Obviously the customer hasn't made that decision. So I can go in here and update that estimated close date or perhaps worse has happened than that. Perhaps this is something that just actually hasn't worked out as well. So let's do the sad path and then the happy path. The first one is to close as lost and then we'll have a look at close as one. So this one just isn't going to happen. We're going to click on close as lost there. And what it will do is give me a little prompt, no actual revenue, the date that it was closed. If I had the competitor and other information in there, if I wanted to say that we lost it to a competitor, I could do that. And so that one then will go off my list of open opportunities and end up in the list of closed opportunities. What happens then? That's now become read only, so it doesn't delete it. We've got that in there for future reference. If we're looking at that organization, that account or person, we could see lost opportunities and the history of them. We might at some point come back and go, these people are wasting our time, but we'll actually lock it down and make it read only and keep it in the system. If I go back now to my list of opportunities, it's dropped from my list of open opportunities. So this is a filtered list that's only showing me the ones that are current. Let's uh, let's take Anna here on the, uh, the happy path where we're going to win this opportunity. So we've gone through, we've done all of the things we need to do in here. I'm going to update the estimated close date, which really I should have done <laughs> well before I got to this uh, proposal stage. But we can go in and edit those things in the header just so you see how that's done. This one is going to be worth $45,000. And... I'm going to go ahead and close that as one. And you'll see it's the same experience as what happens when we close as lost, but this time it's putting that revenue in. It puts in the estimated revenue. If in fact we ended up with $50,000, even though we were estimating 45,000, I can update it there and we can save that one. And that will feed the forecast and all of the other reports that are going on behind the scenes to be able to show you that. The other way you can visualize your opportunities, and this is properly visualizing now, is that we have this pipeline view and this is brand new. I'm actually going to switch across into my other trial system here where I've got this one fleshed out a whole lot more. In time, this is probably going to be the standard way that we work with opportunities as the default thing when you go in rather than that list. So depending on when you're watching, hopefully you're already working with this. Here is my list of open opportunities. Here's the summary, my pipeline value, the number of deals in the pipeline, how much have I won or lost. And what we've got here in the middle is an indication of that grade A, B and C based on what's going on with the predictive scoring. So green there for grade A, yellow for grade B, and thankfully they've switched out red for orange there. So hopefully that means it's more accessible to everybody for the grade C deals. The size of the bubbles in this diagram represent the size of the deals. So the little one here, as I hover over it, that one's only worth 4,990, whereas this big one here is $95,000. Now, at a glance, you can straight away go, how are things going? Are my big bubbles green? <laughs> is the prediction of winning looking good for those ones? Or have I got something, and this is a timeline going ahead into the future, looking ahead, this one's probably going to need a bit of attention. This one not looking so good, but it's worth a lot less. So you can work on all of those things. The other thing that's great here is that we've got the list down the bottom and I can actually click through on one of those and see more detail about it. I can click through from here as well. And this is giving me panel down the side where I've got all of the key details here about the rating and the close date and the estimated revenue, primary contact, notes and so on, tasks. There's an overdue task that I was meant to have done. 
and I can go in and edit these things exactly here. So let's say this one's now going to be worth 30,000. Oh, a few extra zeros there, $30,000 and change that. So this is now a single panel for working on your opportunities where you can go in and get that visual of what's going on, click through on them, make the edits on the side. You can even add activities for emails, phone calls and appointments there. Now I do want to show you the sequence and the intelligent work list because this is an absolutely critical part of working with dynamic sales now and going forward it's just getting more and more important and it's becoming part of the the biggest part of the new release notes so this is an intelligent work list this is giving us a series of suggestions of what we should be doing next and going through in context where this is set up is in down the bottom here we switch across into sales insight settings now depending on your level of access this might be something you can do or not but I really want to show you for those of you understanding the full depth of what's going on here how this is set up even if you're a front-end user it's important to understand what's going on behind the scenes here and this is using a functionality called sequences and sequences allow you to map out a little journey if you like so when a new lead comes in we have got uh, that introductory email that should go out and that can be based on a templated email then did the person interact with that email or not did they within a certain amount of time do we need to make a phone call and so on so we can come in here and say let's create a new sequence and there's a series of templates here that will get you started nice and quick or you can start from blank and create your own so I'm going to have a look at this high volume outbound prospecting which is this one we're using to say when leads come in this is the process we need to follow so you imagine you've got all these leads coming in and you need to make sure that you're stepping through the required steps to qualify those leads so let's use that template and here we have a sequence of steps so first thing that happens is it's sending out an introductory email and that's linked to an email template that you can have set up in the system that can do dear first name and so on in there as well we wait a certain amount of time if you're using LinkedIn integration it can prompt you to do that research on LinkedIn if you're not then you can just choose to delete that step so you can craft this thing however you like including branching logic here so we make a phone call to the customer there's a condition here on whether or not that phone call was made so the person has marked that that phone call was done and then we could branch off in different directions so let's just switch back into the sales app and have a look at the sequence that's here we've actually got multiple sequences sequences working so you can have sequences on accounts on leads on opportunities and all of these things of course are going on at the same time if your job is just working with the leads if you're in that sort of inside sales you might just see a list of leads if you're working sort of at a, a deeper level of account management you might have more related to opportunities and accounts or you might be doing all the things so let's come back to where we started with the list here and we have got up next in the sequence a new product launch invitation so what we're going to do here is send that email and the next step depends on the email engagement what it's actually doing is branching on did they click through on the email in order to decide what happens next so I am going to open up this email and I have set up a demo email address in Gmail there that I own that I'm going to log into so we will see this happen <laughs> fake for real I could make some changes hi Lucy I could add you know nice to chat to you on the phone or something if I'd done that and I send that out it's now waiting 24 hours for that link to be clicked and here's Lucy receiving the email we'd like to invite you it seems like a good idea I'm going to click through on that and register for the event she's done the click we'll close that down what happens here if we refresh this then we can see that Lucy is in the list but now we're up to step three so it actually has worked through registered her click in the timeline here we can see that it was opened we can see that the next one has gone out as a confirmation email and then the next step is ready to go so that branching logic is working and it can interact with actual kind of email interactions as well as how people are marking off phone calls and things you've also got the ability to do filtering in here as well so you can go in here and filter by things that are coming up from tomorrow or just to look at certain record types if you're not working across all of them in a particular moment of your day you can use those filtering and sorting things this is an absolutely massive part of what the sales application is going to do and going to be going forward this up next panel is going to drive everything totally encourage you to spend a lot of time on this and also make sure you're subscribed I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on these sequences and sales enablement features as we get more in there now I did promise you what if you don't like any of the things that are on the screen here so let's go back to the account record 
And remember, I don't want facts, I don't want a ticker symbol, and I want something that allows me to have an account classification of gold, silver, or bronze. So the way we're gonna do this is to actually go to make.powerapps.com in a separate browser, because Dynamics 365 is actually a Power App. Did that just blow your mind? If you're not familiar with the rest of the Power Platform, there is a concept there called model-driven apps, which is basically the same database that sits underneath Dynamics 365, but without all of the stuff I've just shown you as part of it. So it's giving you the capability and you can build your own application from the ground up. So the configuration piece is exactly the same. What we're doing here is configuring tables in Dataverse, which is the underlying piece, and the forms and views and experiences that sit over the top of that. So what we've got here is the account table. I can work with the columns, forms, views, all of these different things. So let's start by saying that we want to add a new column in here to have my account classification. I'm going to call this one account level just so that we know what it's for. We can choose the data types. So you've got all these different data types that you can choose from. So I'm going to go in here and say this is a choice because I want it to be something that we can drop down. You can actually set up a choice to be something you can use in other parts of the system. I'm just going to keep that really nice and simple now. So we'll say the choices are gold, silver, and bronze and save that. And now what I want to do is change what the actual form looks like that the user goes into. So we're going to click here on forms and you will see that this is the back of that. So we've got account information with account name, phone, fax, website, account information, account, phone, fax, website. I'm just going to zoom it up a little bit more so that we can see it. Now this is a WYSIWYG. If you know that acronym, if you're over a certain age, what you see is what you get. Whatever I edit here is what's gonna happen there. So I can click on that section here. That's called account information. Let's say I wanted it to be called account summary and I don't like the capitals, so I can actually change that if I want to. I want to get rid of facts. So I'm gonna go in there and click on facts and hit that little I call it a rubbish bin, trash can in there. Uh, and I also didn't want a ticker symbol, so we can get rid of that as well and so on. Now let's add that new piece. So we created account level. Let's take that and drag it under there. I could also drag it up into the header. So this is a drag and drop experience to bring all of these things in and you can see how flexible it is to make changes. You can also change the number of columns on the screen, the widths of the columns and things and the world's your oyster. So there we go. What I'm gonna do now is save that, publish that, which pushes my saved changes through into the system. Now, if you're doing this in a real world example, you wouldn't be going in and fiddling with a production system. You can have full life cycle management of doing something in a development environment and testing it and then publishing packages of changes that happen all together. Then we come back into the account form and we can see it's changed there to account summary, facts and ticker, nowhere to be seen. And I can set my account level as gold, silver, or bronze. Now, if you would like to do more configuration with Dynamics 365, firstly, let me know in the comments here if you'd like me to do a specific Dynamics 365 configuration tutorial. Also, let me know if you'd like to see more on sales sequences. In the meantime, check out my model-driven apps tutorials. It's all the same underneath. Thank you for watching. Happy CRMing and good luck.